Hi, and uh, thanks for tuning in to another watercolor demo. I know it's been a while since I posted one of these. I've been uh, busy with some other things. I moved house and started a new job. And uh, essentially, I haven't had much time to make these videos or even to paint a whole lot for that matter. And once I got around to painting a little bit more again, I felt I needed to get sort of back into the groove before I spent time on making these uh, demos. So apologies for being a little bit away. Anyhow, today we're painting this uh, winter scene where we're uh, standing on the frozen lake that's covered in snow and we're looking back towards the shore with these, uh, these tracks in the snow that sort of lead our eye into the subject. And we're going to play quite a bit with this, these uh, brightly lit edges of the tracks in the snow. And uh, essentially work a lot with values to sort of see if we can make those pop out and look, look juicy and nice. We, uh, we have this uh, dog in the subject as well. This is actually my my parents' dog. She's a beautiful German she shepherd. She's named Vera. And she's going to be starring in this subject. I am, however, going to move her a little bit more into the subject for composition's sake. Before I start painting, I spray the paper quite uh, generously to make sure that the surface of the paper is is covered in, in sprinkles of water. I think it's a little bit easier to sort of apply the, the pigment and the, and the water this way, but it's the paper is not so damp that you sort of get these uh, wet in wet effects. You can still paint with a hard edge. And as you see here, I'm going in with a sort of gray Quite, quite strong value actually. When you when you consider that we're painting essentially white snow here, it might look like we're going in with quite dark values here. And um, it's a judgment call, but I think this is going to be right because I really want to pop those contrasts around the tracks in the snow. So I can't go in with with can't be too gentle here. I'm just trying to vary the hue a little bit on this otherwise quite grey, large area. Um, the grey is mostly a combination of reds and blues and with some, yeah, some general muck from, the, from my palette. So I try to get a little bit of life in that big sort of light grey area. Otherwise this is quite a, a neat feature of this composition, I think, that quite a huge area of the the subject is essentially a big, big hole, nothing, you know, it's just snow. And I think that's sometimes interesting to paint the compositions like that, where you essentially have all the action compressed into, in this case, the upper part of the, the composition. So this is my first pass, obviously, where I put in only the lightest values of the... Uh, painting and um, again I only really, really want to save the white paper for the tracks in the snow so any details that are white uh, in the rest of the subject I will cover them as well here with some variation of grey or light blue so that's why I'm going over the, the buildings on the shore here in the background Once I've done that, I'll move on to um, putting in the sky that, that's visible mostly in the upper left hand corner. And I'm playing around with quite a few different types of blues for my skies these days. I, I sometimes mix French ultramarine with uh, cobalt turquoise. This time around I'm, I'm playing with a uh, pigment called Windsor Blue which I find is, uh, is quite nice. It's, it's a rather strong pigment. It's go good for these quite cool 
skies um, when we when you need a really strong pigment because um, we really need the sky to be quite strong here remember the the um, the whole snow covered lake thing here is is already quite dark in value so we we got to match that and make sure that we're sort of consistent with our value scheme across the whole subject moving on here to start putting in some trees uh, on the shoreline and this is essentially just putting in some some browns with uh, some uh, variations into it i have some blues mixed in with the browns to cool them off darken them down but still fairly strong. This is uh, sort of the mi middle range pass of the of the painting, and I'm gonna have to come back later and put more volume into things. But still going quite strong in value here at this phase in the painting. Using a bit of tissue here to clean up parts of that building that I want to preserve the white on. Now I'm switching over to the more reddish browns here. The, you know, the, those buildings are painted mostly red. And I'm trying to um, paint as loosely as possible here. I could, of course, spend a lot more time and be a lot more careful and paint the details and angles and lines of those buildings with a lot more attention to detail and so on. But I think my worry is that I will, I will lose sort of the rhythm of the painting and essentially sort of attract attention to, to the, the wrong aspects of the painting. I, I won't, I'd rather have the painting filled with energy rather than have, having it, you know, be perfect in all these instances so yeah trying trying to move move along paint quite rapidly and with a loose touch also being mindful of sort of brush economy here stroke economy um, I'm, I'm maybe not counting my brush strokes but I'm still trying to ensure that I don't do too many things with a brush um, if it's not necessary. And this is just me trying to essentially maintain a fresh, fresh uh, impression of the painting and the technique. And this also means that you have to accept some imperfections. Um, if you, if you, you, you sort of work with a trade-off between perfection and an energy I think and in, in this case I'd, I'd rather paint something that's a little bit messy a little bit crooked but that has some some life to it so that means as few brush marks as possible and um, not really try to represent any detail that will sort of catch the eye and, uh, and invite the viewer to scrutinize the painting so here I'm putting in a, a yet another pass on these trees and some of the buildings and essentially trying to add more volume to them. Uh, make sure that the values are dark enough that it fits in with the whole the, the overall value scheme of the painting. And I'm working uh, wet on dry here. Not sure if you noticed, but I, I did go in with the, the hair dryer and quickly dry the painting there just a little moment ago.
I guess I'm struggling a little bit here. I, I want to do more things to this this part of the subject, the, the shoreline and, and the buildings, but at the same time, I worry that I start fiddling too much with it, and it will lose will lose the uh, what I find attractive with it. That, that it's got that sort of sim- simple impressionist energy to it, and so I'm trying to hold back and really only do what feels necessary. Like I wanted to put in a more orange roof on that building. It was probably a good decision, but really try to think about before I do it because. Essentially, the, f- the fewer layers and the fewer brush marks, the, the better your chances are that you have something that looks fresh in the end. And now we have this uh, other shoreline here that's further back in the background. Um, it's quite dark in the reference photo, but I'll make it slightly more bluish, slightly lighter in value than in the reference photo because I want to really make sure that it's perceived as being fairly far into the background of the subject. Also introducing some some clean water, both using the brush and spray, just to break up that that sharp horizon line or that sharp uh, edge of that forest there in the background. Always trying to vary the painting with the Lost and found edges, hard edges, soft edges. So now to change pace, I start working in the uh, shaded parts of the tracks in the snow here. Altering the uh, hue a little bit between warmer and cooler blues and grays. Also trying to make sure that I adjust the width of my brush strokes so that we get uh, some kind of sense of perspective and distance here. And also again, trying not to fiddle around and be too sucked into details too much and rather just put in some confident brush marks and try to leave them there. And you don't really know if it's going to work out until you've done painting it, but you have to be confident. And yeah, hope your plan works out. And you can see there's some, uh, there's some uh, imperfections, some blooming and cauliflower uh, artifacts the painting and in the snow and I tend to care less and less about that it's uh, they are imperfections in some sense I guess but just makes the painting look more like watercolor I think and I like that so now I'm started working on on the German Shepherd a star of the subject making sure that I go in with uh, some proper rich use here getting the trying to get the ears as accurate as possible because that's essentially the only detail I, I would care about when representing this uh, this beautiful dog um, suggesting the tail there the back side of her, of her but um, the legs uh, I really really try to avoid painting the legs because you're very likely to get something that that's not quite right and it just looks very you know stiff and, and not really quite right so better to leave those things out as much as possible just suggesting that there's a leg or a paw there and of course this cast shadow here behind her is quite important uh, that it links up with the, the body of the dog the body of the dog and uh, also that it's quite deep and strong in value because that suggests to us that we are looking at 
a scene here where the, the sunlight is really quite bright. So that, so that contrast around the shadow is, is helpful there, I think. So while I have some blue in my brush, I'll just touch up some of the shaded areas on the shore. Again, not, hopefully not overworking anything, but again, just crunching out a little bit more contrast and, and the volume of those buildings. As you can see, you can see that I, I sort of hesitate a little bit. I try to think about some of the brush marks. Um, this is difficult, but I, I really make an effort to sort of contemplate most of these brush marks and not just put too many of them in. So that's almost it. I'm gonna touch up this painting, just dry it a little bit and then Move in with some some white gouache, and again trying to be loose here, not get caught up in details or fit around too much. Making sure I, I break the line of that that line that represent represents a flagpole. Make sure that I have a lot of breaks in it and just some dots and things to suggest that there's some some things on, on those buildings and little details that's catching the sunlight. So here's the finished painting. If you enjoyed watching this, please hit like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one.